I'm glad that uh, our hope is built tonight on Jesus Christ. He's about the only thing that is dependable 100% of the time. <clears throat> he never changes. I'm grateful that he is faithful to us. The faithfulness of God. To be faithful doesn't mean that he's faithful 360 days a year. 364 days a year or even 364 and a half days a year it means he is faithful every day Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever that verse has to do with his character his unchanging character John chapter 10 Ira Bowen mentioned to me the other day, asked me if I'd ever preached on this. I said, I don't believe I ever have. And I don't know that this is what he's got in mind. Uh, maybe I should have called him today and asked him, but uh, he asked me the other day about some scripture here in John chapter 10. And I want to just share a verse or two with you tonight and uh, some thoughts, and I'm going to be uh, very brief, the Lord willing. And uh, I told Brother Shook I'd try to be mindful of what he has in store tonight and what he has in front of him. And uh, I don't want to preach so long that all the help gives up and goes home and says, well, it's too late to start now. So I'm going to try to be brief here in the next 15 or 20 minutes, but if I can just plant a seed thought and remind you of some things tonight, then uh, that will accomplish what I intend to. Let's bow for just a moment of prayer and ask God to add his blessing to his word. And then we'll read a few verses. Father, I do thank you tonight for the blessing of the Word of God. I thank you for your faithfulness that you never change. Thank you for the fact that you're dependable day in and day out. And, Lord, that your Word never changes. It reads the same. I thank you for that, Lord. In this changing world, in a, in a world that is so independable, I thank you, Lord, for the fact that you're faithful to us every day. And I pray you'll bless and honor your word now, and may we be reminded of what it means for you to know us as it means for us to know you. And we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 10, verse number 1, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Skip with me over to verse 14. For I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Verse 27 again, he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I want to just share tonight in a very brief few minutes what the Lord knows about us. Now, I can't preach all the Lord knows about us in a few minutes, but I want to just mention some things the Lord knows about us tonight. I'm glad the Lord knows us better than we know ourselves. Here in the scripture, first of all, he tells us in verse 3 that he knows our name. Now you think about that. I was thinking today of how hard it is sometimes for me to keep up with everybody's name. Sometimes people come out and shake hands with me, and I know their name as well as I know my own, but they're already at the back door before I get it called because I'm shuffling and, and, and so forth. And uh, I paused the other day about calling somebody's name, and I told them what I was doing. I, usually a man and wife, I learned them by pairs. And I said, when I first looked at you, I, I went blank, and I had to go back and thank your husband's name and put it together, and both of his name together, I knew what your name was. And, uh, but uh, you think about the Lord knows every one of us tonight by name. That's how well he knows us. He knows us by name. He emphasized in these verses, verse 3, he said that he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. 
And then he reminds us in verse 14 that I read, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. He said again in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. The Lord knows us tonight. Just, I believe it was last Wednesday night, possibly the week before. I, well, last Wednesday night, I believe it was. I preached about the name of Jesus. And I used the scripture in one of the points that I made out of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, where the Bible said, The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Did you know tonight there will not be one counterfeit slip into heaven? A lot of people know how to talk the talk that don't walk the walk. And a lot of people know how to talk the talk that can't walk the walk because they do not know Jesus, nor does Jesus know them in a personal way. And uh, they have never had a personal experience with Jesus Christ. But the foundation of God standeth sure. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And there will not be an individual that will ever slip into heaven unaware, that will ever slip in that the Lord does not know. But the Lord knows those that are his and them that belong to him he knows exactly who they are so the Lord knows our name Psalms 103 and verse number 14 tells us something else the Lord knows about us and uh, this amazes me uh, when I read a verse like I'm about to read in Psalms 103 and verse number 14 the Bible said for he knoweth our frame he remembereth that we are dust you see he not only knows our name but he knows our nature he knows what we are and the Lord said he knoweth our frame he remembereth that we are dust now, if we could really just comprehend what that verse of Scripture is telling us. We talk about how much the Lord loves us and we get excited about how the Lord loves us. And we get excited about all the benefits that the Lord blesses us with and bestows upon us. But you think about how much the Lord loves us and think about all the benefits and blessings that He bestows upon us and that we enjoy from His hand and then read this verse. He knoweth our frame. He knows what we are. And he remembereth that we are dust. In other words, the Lord knows not only our name, but he knows our very nature. He knows our very character. He knows what we are. And yet we enjoy all these blessings at his hand in spite of what we are and what the Lord knows about us. Amen? And, and, and that ought to be a blessing to every one of our hearts to realize that the Lord, that means he knows our strength, but he also knows our weaknesses. He knows the good things about us, but he also knows the bad things about us. He knows tonight what we are. He knoweth our frame. He knows what we're made out of. And he remembers that we're but dust. Sometimes I'd like to remind folks, hey, I am, I am a human being. I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. And sometimes I'd like to remind folks that, I, that I'm a human being. I'm not perfect or I'm not I'm not God. I, I, I'm, I'm a preacher and I'm a man of God, but that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Sometimes we forget each other as to what we're made out of. But the Lord knows the very nature that we have. Do you know tonight, It's one. You, most of you see me uh, on, on my good side. You see me on Sunday. You see me on Wednesdays. And your relationship with me is as your pastor. And most everything you know about me is good. At least I hope all of you know about me is good anyway. Amen. And, uh, and most of you love me, and I thank God for that. But if you could see the ugly side of me, huh? 
if you could see me the way God sees me. Now, it impresses me for you to love me, but I'd be far more impressed with your love if you knew me the way God knows me. You see, I know most of you on a Sunday basis and on a Wednesday night basis, and I know most of you in a church relationship. But I don't know you the way God knows you. But do you know what? In spite of everything that we are or everything that we're not that we should be, God knows what we are. He knows the very nature of us. He knows our weaknesses, our strength. He knows our ups, our downs, our good points, our bad points. He knows everything there is to know about us, and yet his love never changes or never alters. The degree of his love is never moved by what we do or what we don't do. He knows us for what we are and loves us anyway. That ought to make every one of us shout, Amen. Just think about the Lord knoweth our frame. You know, what he's simply telling us here is that I understand you. I know your frame, I know what you are, and I know what you're made out of. He said, I remember that you're just dust. That means the Lord understands us. Do you know tonight one of the hardest things sometimes it is to live with as a preacher or, or for that matter, whether you're a preacher or not, is to be misunderstood and somebody to not understand you. But do you know that the Lord understands us tonight? Somebody will sit down sometimes and they'll, they'll share their heart with me and about every other sentence they'll say, you know what I mean, Brother Berman? You know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? Does it make sense what I'm trying to tell you? Do you, can you, do you know what I'm trying to say? And, and what it is, they're sitting there pouring their heart out to me and they really are questioning whether or not they're getting through to me and whether or not I'm understanding where they're coming from and what they're trying to say. But I want to tell you tonight, there's a God in heaven that knows our frame and knows what we're made out of, that we never have to plead with him and say, God, you understand me? Do you know what I mean? Lord, do you know where I'm coming from? He knows who we are and what we are, and yet he's there to understand us and love us in spite of. He knoweth our frame. The Lord knows everything there is to know about us. He knows our name. He knows our very nature. Then according to Matthew, see, I said I wasn't going to preach long, but they, you know, I, let me mention this right here. I don't know if y'all have noticed this or not, but we're developing an amen corner in this place. Down here around the front, people hollering amen. Now, if you don't want me to preach a long time, y'all going to have to get together and, and hold that down because that's just like sicking a bulldog going, you know, when you, uh, amen, man's up trying to preach, and you're sitting there hollering, amen, that just seeks me on, makes me want to preach. That don't bother me a bit. A lot of preachers, you know, they get upset and get disturbed. Somebody's hollering, amen, but I kind of like it. <laughs> Look at Matthew 6 and verse 8. Let me read from verse 5. We'll start in verse 5. Matthew 6. And verse 5, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Look in verse 8. But be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. He knows our name, he knows our nature, and he knows our needs. He knows our needs before we ever ask. You, you know, you don't have to you know, you don't have to, to be repetitious with him as he's talking about here that, that uh, you know, the more we say it, that, you know, we're, that's not going to assure that we are getting through to the Lord and he's hearing us. He said he knows before we have need. He knows what our needs are before we ever ask. He knows our needs. Do you know tonight that a good shepherd knows the needs of his sheep 
And do you know tonight that there's not an individual sitting in this place tonight but what the Lord knows the very needs that you have, whether they be spiritual needs, whether they be material needs, the Lord knows every one of those needs that you have. I was up at the funeral home yesterday, as you noticed in our prayer book, and tonight, Sister Danny McLeod's mother died. And uh, here a few weeks ago, we were taking up the camp offering. Different ones were committing to give money and so forth. And Danny said that morning she raised her hand and she said, I'll give 40 something dollars, I believe it is, I'm saving, I've had some money, some change set aside, quarters and dimes and nickels and so forth, for Neil and I to go on vacation, spend on vacation. She said, I feel like the Lord wants me to give that. Well, yesterday I was given, and I don't know, uh, I don't know where it come from, I was just asked to give this envelope, envelope to uh, Danny when I got to the funeral home or not necessarily when I got the funeral home. I think this was given on Sunday. And so I didn't know what was in it. Didn't know where it come from. I just did what I was told. I gave that envelope to her. In a few moments, I looked over there, and she had that envelope out. And she was sitting there with her hands in her face, and she was crying. And then she handed me this little note. Danny said, Brother Berman, she said, uh, when I gave that change, she said, I had $49 and a dime. And she said, I kept that dime out and put a dollar in there to make it $50 even. And she held up a $50 bill at me and said, here's a $50 bill that God told somebody to give to me uh, to replace that money I give. And she said, this morning the family got together and, and, and divided up and was going to contribute to the spray for for mother's coffin to go on top of the coffin and she said my part was fifty dollars <laughs> she said my share was fifty dollars and I said well the Lord knew what you needed and so the Lord just supplied that need now I don't know if she asked him or when she asked him but but, but uh, before mother ever died the Lord just turned the wheels of, of his own providence and provided the need you know tonight that there's not an individual in here that God does not know your need before you ever ask him. God knows our needs, whether it be $50 or $500. God knows what it is. And I said, well, Sister Danny, I don't believe I was kidding her. And I said, I don't believe that was meant to make you cry. She said, oh, I'm not crying because I'm sad. She said, I'm happy. And what the Lord does. The Lord knows our name, he knows our nature, and he knows our very needs. Before we ever ask him, he knows what they are. And he supplies those needs. Be not ye therefore like unto them, speaking about the heathen. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. I've never been, you know, a lot of people, they call it poor mouthing. And a lot of people, you know, uh, they want to help God out. One of the most blessed experiences that I've ever learned in serving God is trusting Him for the things I need and see God meet those needs. I don't believe a Christian. I don't believe, listen, if I needed a set of tires on my car tonight and God knew I needed that set of tires I don't believe I'd have to go down to the tire store and tell that fella down there hey I like I said one fella you know said he needed a set of tires and said he went down to the tire store and told the manager he knew he was a Christian and said I, I want you to help me pray brother said I need a set of tires and I want you to help me pray God supply the need He wasn't depending on God to supply that need. He went down there to bum a set of tires, amen? Might as well be honest about it. <laughs> amen? 
But the Lord knows our needs. And God uses people. I used to, I, I, I've got a lot of pride. I don't have near as much as I used to have, but I got more than I need now. But I got one of the greatest blessings. I, I mean, I've always been independent and I've always wanted to be self-sufficient, so to speak. But, but I got one of, one of the greatest blessings one day when I was reading over in the book of Luke, I believe it's chapter 6, where it talks about give and it shall be given unto you. And, and, and there was always a certain amount of humility about it when somebody else gives you something. Somebody told me one time, said, Brother Burnham, you're the hardest person in the world I've ever seen to give something to. But I was reading that verse of Scripture over there one day, and it said give. And I've always, since I've been right with God, have tried to give and, 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 and to give what belongs to God and to give above what I know God expects of me and I've tried to be obedient. But I was reading that verse one day where it said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Whatever you give, it shall be given. And then it talks about pressed down, shaken together and running over. And then the next little phrase got a hold of me. It said, Shall men give into your bosom? And I said, Oh, me. <laughs> you know what God does? Just the, the example that I shared with you a moment ago, when Danny McLeod gave that, God used somebody else to give it back to her. Give and it shall be given. Give and it shall be given. Shall men give into your... God uses us to meet the needs of each other. We're God's children. If we listen to him and obey him, then we are used at times for our needs to be met and we're used at times to meet the need of others because we are the body of Christ. He knows what we have need of before we ever ask. And a lot of times God puts the wheels in motions before the need ever arose. Did you know God had a lamb before Adam ever sinned? The Bible said Jesus Christ was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And before Adam ever sinned in the Garden of Eden, God had his need met in the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Nothing has ever occurred to God. Has that ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? <laughs> Amen. Nothing ever slips up on him. Let me mention one, one other thing. You're going to like this. I kind of stretch my alliteration a little bit here. The Lord knows our name, he knows our nature, he knows our needs, and he knows our notions. <laughs> now that's an old country word, but I looked that word up in the dictionary today. And you know what that word notion means? It means a strong inclination to do something. And over in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible said, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Do you know that the, by the Lord knowing our name and our nature and our needs, He knows when we have an inclination to do something that we shouldn't do. He knows when we have an inclination to give in to temptation. And do you know that He knows how to deliver us out of that notion? He knows how to deliver us out of that inclination to do what we shouldn't do. He knows how to deliver us out of temptation. I could preach for 30 minutes on temptation. The world is full of temptation. Everywhere we turn, we're faced with temptation. And because we're Christians, it does not exempt us from temptation. This verse in itself tells us that. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. He didn't say the ungodly out of temptation, but the godly out of temptation. That tells me that the godliest of people are faced with temptation. Jesus was. He was faced with temptation. Not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to give in to the temptation. But aren't you glad that when we're faced with a situation and we think, well, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, that the Lord knows how to get you out of it. The Lord knows how to deliver you from that strong inclination when you're faced and enticed with temptation that the Lord knows how to deliver you out of that. 
He knows how to free you from that. And he knows how to get you beyond that and let you live and walk in victory. That's why he said, pray that you enter not into temptation. The, the spirit is, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you enter not into temptation. And back over there in Matthew where we were at a moment ago, when, the, when he was teaching the disciples how to pray and when he told them not to pray uh, as the heathen do and so forth, he said, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you uh, ask him. And then the very next verse in verse 9, he said, after this manner pray ye. And one of those things that is included in that prayer is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord is telling you and I that a part of our prayer life should be, Lord, lead us out of temptation. Lead us away from temptation. The Lord knows how to lead us away from temptation. Some things the Lord knows about us tonight. Many many things. If you want a, a blessing, take that little word no in your concordance. I just picked out four places. Take that little word no and trace it down through the scripture and find out how many things the Lord knows about you. He knows all about us. Many, many things that he knows about us. One of the things he repeated to the church, to the churches of Asia and the book of Revelation was that I know thy works. I know thy patience and, and different things. But a lot of times we work and we think the Lord don't know and nobody knows what we do, but the Lord knows. The Lord knows what we do and he's the one that's keeping the books. Amen? He's the one that's keeping the record. Many, many things the Lord knows about us. Look that up. Search that out. See what a blessing it is to find out how much the Lord knows about us. Well, Brother Tom comes. We'll get a song ready tonight. We never know the hearts and the minds of people. But we never take anybody for granted. And we never have a service without an invitation. And there might be somebody here tonight that God has spoke to your heart. And you need to come and pray. Whatever your need is, I would encourage you to be obedient to the Lord tonight. Father, take the message. I pray you'll use it to your own honor and to your own glory. Blessing the invitation. If there are people here that need to come tonight, help them to be obedient and help them to come in Jesus' name.